We thank you tonight. Thank you, Lord, because of your wisdom. Thank you for your desire to help us. Thank you, God, because you know us. You know our frame. You know our frail. You know our situation. You know where each one of us is coming from. You know our background. You know our capacities. You know what we can understand. And you know what we cannot. Father, we present ourselves to you tonight. Unto you who knows us and who made us. Visit with us according to our measures in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Father, we are pleading with you that you carry all of us along Speak in a manner that no one will be left behind. And that God, the secret of your intention, will be made plain unto us as we go forward. Holy Spirit, help us tonight. Release your word unto us. Release your wisdom unto us. Those things you want to accomplish by our lives and by our hands, let them not elude us in the name of Jesus Christ. Those blessings that you hear much for our lives. God, we will not miss them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. All those who have come with eager expectations for definite touch, for a definite encounter with you. Let them not go home disappointed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we are asking tonight, arise and help us. Arise and speak concerning us. Arise, Lord, and set us in motion, O man of war. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for bringing us back here tonight. As we have prayed, we know that God, unto whom we have cried, is a living God. He will answer us and do for us what no man can do in the name of Jesus Christ. We are still going to press on where the Lord stopped us yesterday night. We have been praying. We have been praying. Actually, there are certain things we feel the Holy Ghost wants to pass across our hearts. We've been asking him to grant us a free utterance and to grant us wisdom and to grant us simplicity of expression so that it does not appear ambiguous to any of us, does not appear difficult and abstract as far as what our response towards all these things must be. I want to remind you something God began to say. God is saying that despite you, despite your strengths, despite your weaknesses, despite your inadequacies, His eyes have come to focus upon you. And that He wants to do something with our lives. He wants to do something with you. He wants to manifest himself, manifest his glory by your life. That's what the Lord says. And it's so difficult for us not to continue to emphasize what God is saying about us. God seems to say that he believes in what he can make out of our lives as we yield ourselves to him individually and corporately. Hallelujah. And you see, this night, I've been asking the Lord, how does he want to push this meeting on? And whereas there are several indications 
that there's a work God wants us to do. There's a challenge God is going to move us into. There is a battle God is going to use us to win for His glory. There is something definite that God is going to cause to happen by our hands and by our lives. Yet I see the Lord asking us to support a bit so as to build up the basis and build up the secret of strength. The secret that will turn our lives around for His glory. The secret of the might with which we are going to step out and accomplish these purposes for God. And so tonight, it's like we are going to take a step backward, yet we are going forward by the grace of God. Hallelujah. We are going to say things that look simple, things that look trivial, things that look familiar, yet they are the eternal principles with which God operates with any man with whom he wants to walk. And it will not be fear on you if we assume it. If we took it for granted. If we went on and on and on and on. And we did not point at these issues. As basic as they are, I've never known any man of God that can outgrow it. As simple as they look, I've never seen any man making progress with God that must not take note of it. And so tonight, I'll be laying a principle, a very simple principle, but I'm trusting that the Spirit of God will expand it. The Spirit of God will give you insight onto it. You may not be able to see immediately for tonight how we are going to apply it onto the work, onto the challenge, onto the outreaches that we've been talking about. But just trust the Lord with us as we go on tonight. By the time this meeting rises and we move into it back here tomorrow and the next, it will be clear to you what the Lord actually wants to do. Hallelujah. And tonight I said we are going to be looking at the secret of strength, the secret of might in the lives of men and women that God decides to work with. Men that you think are great in the hand of God. Men that you suppose are wonderfully used by God. What is the secret of their strength? What is the secret of their might? What is the secret of their effectiveness? What is the secret of their power? What do they guard jealously in their lives that makes things to go smoothly ahead of them? that makes mountains to become plains ahead of them, that makes the power of darkness to dismantle as they move on, you know, in the service of the Lord. And we want to do that as simply as we can tonight. I'm praying that God himself will place these principles on your spirit and help you to respond to them in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, Let's take the book of Judges chapter 6 again as our study, just to begin. But I intend tonight to do a survey of several men that became great in the hand of God. What was their secret? What exactly did they have that turned their lives around? But we are going to start again from the life of Gideon that we started studying yesterday night. Judges chapter 6. This night I'm not going to read the whole story. I'll just point you to some relevant Bible verses and we'll go ahead. Let's look at verse 11, verse 12, verse 13, verse 14. We'll read it quickly to verse 17. 12 to 17. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, 
If the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where be all these miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us from the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with you, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said to him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Let's stop there. May God bless his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, when the angel came to Gideon, and he looked at Gideon, and the angel said, The Lord is with you, thou mighty man of valor. I pointed to you yesterday that by the time the angel was speaking to Gideon, Gideon had not yet as much as killed a fly. Is that alright? As at the time that God was making this pronouncement about Gideon, there is nothing tangible, nothing measurable, nothing physical that we could say Gideon has acquired that will make him to have this title, thou mighty man of valor. And when God calls him a mighty man of valor, it was not because of what he has done. It was not because of the intensity of his activities. It was not because he was very strong-handed and strong-hearted and strong-willed and was able to do something. No. That was not why God spoke to him. I know it will have been wonderful if at the end of the battle against the Midianites, he had slaughtered all the Midianites and he was coming back jubilating with the heads of all those kings and generals, eh, Zeba and Zamuna. And he was coming back and now say, yes, the Indian appeared to him and said, yes, the Lord be with you, thou mighty man of valor. Shall we not understand it that time? Shall we not say, yes, the mighty man. The mighty man that holds the head of mighty men. Hallelujah. But it's not like that. It's not like that. And that is bringing me to saying some things to you tonight. What makes a man mighty is not the activity he does. It is the abiding presence of God upon his life. I so say what I'm going to be saying tonight is not new. It's not big. In fact, I'm praying for God to make it very simple. That every one of you will pick it. So that you will not leave this meeting not knowing what God wants to do. We have spoken in very big, 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 big terminologies. But God wants to bring us onto practical action. What makes a man mighty? What makes a man a man of valor? What makes a man a powerful man? What makes a man an accomplished man in life? It's not how much struggles he knows how to put together. It is the abiding presence of God with him. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I've said so far? And when the Lord's presence chooses to abide with a man, if 
even when that man had not got an opportunity to smite a flag. But the presence of God abides with that man is a mighty man. Are you getting this much more? Eh? Even when that man had not pushed down anything, but the Lord has agreed to walk with him, to live and abide in his life. If that man does not do something today, you can be sure he will do something tomorrow. Hallelujah. If there's a man, if there's a woman who cherishes the presence of God in his life and cultivates the presence of God on a daily basis and God is happy to walk with him, to abide with him, to move with him, to settle with him, that man Mark him, mark him out. He can never be lost in the midst of the crowd. There's no battle that may confront him that he will not win. There is no confederacy that stands against that man that he will not overcome. There is no obstacle, there is no mountain that may rise his head against a man with whom God has agreed to walk that will not become a plane. Hallelujah. The greatest heritage that any man could have in life is not money. It's not houses. It's not weapons of war. The greatest heritage a man could maintain in this life is the Lord's presence abiding on his life every day. Hallelujah. So when you see a man, he may not be significant today. He may not be recognized by his colleagues and classmates today. He may not even have a say in a local church. He may not even be recognized, may not be an elder. He may not be a deacon, may not be a leader anywhere. But quietly, quietly and steadily, the Lord's presence settles on his life, marking he is a leader. is much more than majority. Hallelujah! When the angel came and looked at Gideon, and he said, the Lord is with you, and your mighty man of valor. The angel was saying something that is so serious. He said, all you needed to overcome all the media night as one man is not sophisticated weapon. Hallelujah. All you need to finish all the media night, and do you know the Bible talked about media night that they were as many as grasshoppers that they could not be numbered. Have you come across that in the Bible? That their, their cattle were so plenty. That you cannot count them. Yet. The Lord said. Keep on. You are going to smite them. As though you are fighting one man. Why? Because I will be with you. And so without. Wasting time. Without mincing word. I have seen a secret. And I want you to get to know about it. And I want you to invest all your heart. I want you to invest all your life. I want you to invest all your prayers. Not in acquiring money. 
not in acquiring clothes, not in acquiring more cars, not in acquiring all the big, 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 big theological education, but in acquiring one thing. What is that one thing? The presence of the Lord. If the Lord is saying that He wants to use you, there is only a secret. Some of you are wondering, when God says He will use you, you are going to become an instrument of revival. You are saying, how will it happen? There is just one thing that will make it to happen. If the Lord will be with you. Are you following me, small, small? God cannot be with a man and that man will sink. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If God is sitting with me in a boat, Abba, storms may arise. And the storm will be throwing that boat up and throw it down and it will turn it like that. And it will turn it like that. But the truth is this. As long as Baba is with me, that boat can never overturn. Are you understanding that now? When you see a man with whom God decides to dwell, that's a man you don't need to fight. You don't need to fight him. If you fight him, you are kicking against the pricks. If you see a man with whom God has decided to have mercy, and dwell with him. That's a man you cannot break. You cannot break him. God's presence makes a man so elastic that he cannot bend under pressure. God's presence in a man's life makes him so extensive that he reaches where otherwise he ought never to reach by himself. God's presence, it adds something to a man that makes him to enlarge, enlarge beyond human capacity because the Lord is with him. And so the greatest thing that I'm praying to happen to you, and you know I'm very, I'm, I'm praying, I don't, there's nothing high sounding that I want you to go out away with. I want you to go out with God. Hallelujah. I want you to, 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 this meeting, this thing, I say, God, you are saying something. Whatever dimension of ministry, whatever dimension of vision God is showing you, that's no problem. No problem. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No problem. Even if God is putting a vision in your heart that you are going to overrun the whole world, that's no problem. If Baba will be with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Once God is with a man, he can never run out of resources with which to carry out God's assignment and mandate on his life. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Are you getting what I'm saying? The Lord said, the angel looked at that young man. He said, the Lord is with you. Your mighty man of valor. Do not slaughter the goat yet, oh, but I can see that you're a mighty man. And Gideon said, how can you say I'm a mighty man? What kind of thing are you talking with me like this? He said, I'm telling you, go in this your might. What was his might? What was his might? The presence of God in his life was his might. As if angels, when they see a man with whom God decided to tabernacle, even angels, they begin to, to be jealous of that man. They say, this one, is a mighty man. Is a mighty man. Because the almighty God had decided to, to stay behind him. Don't play with him. What did I say to you? When you see a man with whom God 
decided to dwell, you don't need to oppose him. Are you getting me? You don't need to fight him. You don't need to struggle with him. You don't need to backbite him. The truth is that whatever you do, he will stay with There's nothing you do. Call his name anywhere. Call a meeting. Discuss him, discuss him, discuss him, discuss him. If God be with him, you will prevail nothing. And I want now to say, the poverty of any man, the weakness of any man, the weakness of any church, the weakness, the emptiness of any ministry is no lack of money. It's no lack of gadgets. It is not even lack of equipment. It is lack of God's presence. Do you hear what I'm saying? So if you want to do anything at all, if you want to pray, tonight. If you want to respond to the purpose of God for your life, I wish you will narrow your prayer to only one thing. God, come with me. God, are you here with me? There is a sense in which everybody says, yes, God is with us, God is with us, God is with us. That's a general sense. But there is a particular sense in which God is with a man. And God is not with everybody. God is omniscient. That's alright. God is omnipresent. God is everywhere. God is everywhere. But the fact that God is everywhere is not the same as God is with me. <laughs> May the Holy Ghost be to an understanding. That God is everywhere. Yes, God is everywhere because He's everywhere. God is everywhere. He's everywhere. But God doesn't identify with everyone. Men that you will notice have become great. You can look at the word of God closely. They were not men of any other thing. What distinguished them, what separated them among men, is God's presence that went with them. And so tonight, as I do this survey with you, I first of all survey it. I like to show you so that you can get to believe that there's no other magic about being great for God. Hallelujah. No magic. I'm coming to know it again and again and again and again. <laughs> and I'm happy to inform you that the more a man cultivates the presence of God in his life, the more powerful he becomes. And if I want to become something bigger for God, I do not need to do any other thing. I do not need to run around. I do not need to make more contacts. I only need to acquire much more of God's presence in my life. Hey, sister, are you following me? Are you? God will give you understanding. If I want more progress in life, I want more progress in ministry. If I want more influence on the lives of men, if I want to speak and people's hearts will melt, if I want to speak and affect people, 
and change their destiny. I do not need to acquire more materials. I do not need to acquire more methodologies. I do not need to acquire more monies and more equipment and more instruments. I only need to acquire, if that word is permitted, more and more of His presence. Am I saying something to you? God's presence will bring in resources to your life. God's presence will turn the hearts of your enemies and they will just suddenly be at peace with you. You don't know what the Bible says. That if the will of a man pleases the Lord, he causes his enemies to do what? To be at peace with him. We have agreed on the point I'm raising. The next question that we are going to be dealing with how does a man walk and carry and bear God's presence along with him into every step he needs to take in this life? What I'm saying simply, before I go back, I have not surveyed it, so I want to survey it because out of the mouth of two or three weaknesses, every truth is what is established. We want to prove it from scriptures. So that if you are convinced, because sometimes you are not convinced, sometimes you think there are some other things you need to do in this life so that you can get something done for God. But if you are convinced, and you are fully persuaded, you will spend all you can, all your time, all your emotions, seeking this thing until you possess it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at the scriptures. We will look at Gideon. Let's go forward. I want you to turn to the book of the book of Genesis Genesis go to verse I mean chapter thirty seven, thirty eight and thirty nine. Let's look at the life of Joseph very briefly. We are trying to see what made him great. What made him arrive at what God wanted him to arrive at. What brought him into the vision that God wanted him to have in his life. Let's take Joseph quickly. We'll take other men as we are going on. Hallelujah. The whole of chapter 37 was speaking about Joseph and his brothers and Jacob, their father. I know you are Bible students. You will study it when you get home. How that young man started dreaming dreams of what God was to make of his life. How he dreamt another dream. How he told it to his father. And his father said, look, don't tell it to your brothers. How the story went on and went on and went on and went on. And how his brothers sold him out. Hallelujah. And how they brought him onto the house of Potiphar in the land of Egypt. So go quickly to chapter 39 and see the Bible. See the Bible. Are you with me? And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, 39 verse 1. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, 
captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down there. Look at verse 2. And the Lord was what? Was with Joseph. And what happened to him? And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Listen. If that Bible verse didn't say all that he said, my, my, my conflict wouldn't have been too much. The Lord was with most, uh, Joseph. He was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. What kind of prosperity is that? They say he's a prosperous man and he has no house. Imagine that. He was a prosperous man, he was a slave. He was a prosperous man, he was serving an Egyptian. He was a prosperous man, he had only one cloth. What kind of prosperity is that? I want to tell you. God decides to be with a man even if he has not more than one cloth today. Don't undermine him. He's a prosperous man. When you will have finished all that you are having today that is making you feel big and you will have finished, that man will still be on. When all that you have gathered around yourself that you are counting and say yes because I have this, because I have this, because I have this, because I have this, because I have that. When all those ones will have finished and they will become history. That man with whom God decides to live and to walk will remain. A man that is working with God is a constant man. Hallelujah. He's constant under all circumstances. He can never break. The Bible said, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. So go on. Are you with me? And his master saw that the Lord was with him. Are you getting that? What did he see? How does he see it? That's what I'm saying to you. If the Lord is with a man, it is not hidden. And I don't want you to play around with it. I want you to pray. I don't want you to be careless. I want you to take an opportunity that God is offering you. The Lord wants to be with you. I'm telling you something, my brothers. The greatest endowment God can put in your life is to bring Himself to be with you. began to show a dream to Joseph. God meant that that dream was going to come to pass. But many of us were wondering, what is the initial capital that God was going to give Joseph in order to become what God said? What is that initial capital? His presence. Hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Look, if God wants you to be a preacher, He will not give you a library. He will not give you a library. Not library of books, library of sermon notes, library of cassettes. No. He will give you His presence. If God's presence began to be with you, 
can I tell you again? Can I whisper to you? You will go places. If God's presence began to abide in your life on a continuous basis, if we don't hear of you today, no problem. We are going to hear of you tomorrow. I want to say to you again, the initial capital and the most important capital with which God set forth any man whom he wants to use is not money, is not projects, is not houses, is what? His presence. And if you can understand God and His presence begins to draw close to you, I would like to congratulate you. I would like to say praise God for you because I know something good is ahead of you. Can I say the converse? When I do not see the presence of God on your life, I may see many cars around you. I may see many big, big friends around you. I may see many, many politicians being your friends. I may see many, many contacts and contracts around you. I will still like to weep for you because you don't have anything. What you have are perishables. They are disposable. And I don't know what your life will amount to. Nothing. When God raises a church who desires His presence first and foremost in their private lives as individuals, then that church is a blessed church. They will go places. When they were sending brother Joseph onto Egypt, do you know that he went home not preparing that he was going to Egypt? Is that alright? Did they carry clothes thinking that maybe he will sleep overnight? What did he tell his father when he was going? I'm going to come. Is that not so? Nobody planned for him to sleep overnight. So all the beautiful pack of clothes that he had at home, and I don't know how many portmanteaus he had in his house. May God help him in the name of Jesus. God didn't see that as a necessity to pack along with him as he was going to Egypt. And do you know that it was not an accident? As far as God was concerned, that he landed in Egypt that day, God saw it coming. And God's initial capital and investment for him to get into this long journey, that he may not return back until many, many years coming, was not a pack of clothes. God wasn't worried. Maybe his clothes will tear, and you have no other clothes to wear. God knew that if my presence go with him, he can never be naked. And I'm praying for you tonight. I don't know what you will pray when it's time for me to ask you to pray. But if, as I'm seeing the Holy Spirit talk, I don't want any other thing in my life. I want his presence. I will cry for it. I will pray for it. It's never enough for me. I need it much more. I just know that some of us will have a call of God on our life that is very bogus. It's difficult to be telling you because when you are saying it, we will look proud. We will look so arrogant. Some of you say, brother, cool down because you are daydreaming. So there's no need talking about it. But I know that those things will come to pass. But the only investment I need 
against his presence. There are clothes in the house for Joseph. God didn't see that as a necessary pack that he needed to go with. There are plenty cattles in his father's compound that if he just said, Daddy, I need cattles, they will have given him plenty. No. God saw that the only thing he needed in his life in preparation for this future calling of God on his life was what? God's presence. And the Lord was with him. So the Bible said, and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Do you see what, what makes men to be prosper, prosperous now? What is it? God's presence. God's presence. May God help you in the name of Jesus. I know you want to make it in business. How many people are in business here? Let me see your hand up. You're in business. And you want your business to prosper. Let me see your hand up. You are concerned, Lord, prosper my business. Can I see your hand? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm happy with you. But let me tell you, it is not by running around. Are you getting me? It is not by hard work. You will work hard though. The word brings prosperity to whatsoever a man doeth. Is what? Prosperity. But, but you know what is, what is bothering me about you? Your eagerness to make it in business. Something is telling you that. One of the things to chalk off in order to make more time so that this your business can grow is God's presence. You understand what I'm saying? Any time you are about to go to Onisha for business and they said the thing will leave at 3 a.m. What do you do about your quiet time that day? You cancel it. And say, God, you know I have to be at the park. You see, I've been praying that this my business will go. You see, I have to be at the park now. And unconsciously, what will have made you prosperous is the first thing you throw away. Anytime you are making an adjustment. a bit tight carelessly the first thing you adjust and reduce is the presence of God in your life I know it's because you are ignorant God is going to pardon your ignorance I know I know it's because you don't know I know the devil tells you that there's something else you can do to make it in life apart from this one. When we talk of God's presence, with you, if you are not understanding, he said, and so what? What will you give me? Because I'm, I'm handing myself over to you. Heaven this said, what will you give me? You don't know that it was because of that foolish question that he asked that he couldn't get an answer for that he went to marry Agar. And for the next 13 years, his home was in trouble because he did not understand the presence of God. do pray even if the only revival that we begin in this meeting is a revival of the search for God's presence in your life you have got a key you have got a key it's a master key 
There's no door he cannot open. Because he said, I am he that holds the keys of David. When I shout, no man can do what? Can open it. When I, when I open a door to you, no man can shut it. Even as a preacher, you know that you can be too concerned about ministry, about preaching, about the work, about your project, about everything, about your outlook, about your dressing, about this, about this, about emulating the way you present your message as to forget God's presence. You seem to believe that if every other thing is alright, even if God's presence has reduced to the barest minimum, you will still make it. It's unfortunate. What did I say? It's unfortunate. Every man that won a battle for God, it is because the Lord was with him. And I'm telling you with all my heart, I don't see any obstacle before you. I don't. If only the Lord will abide with you. I have boldness to assure you in the course of this meeting that God will carry you to everywhere He says if only you can cultivate His presence in your life. The Bible said concerning this Joseph because the man saw that the Lord was, was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand Joseph found grace in his sight in, in that man's sight what was bringing all of this now? God's presence Those persons will bring you favor, divine favors. People that are naturally tough and difficult and callous, when they see God's presence hovering all around you, they will melt. They will melt. They will melt. Police will melt. Ah, you don't know what I'm saying. But you see, God's presence is not, first of all, the way you dressed. You get me? Some of us were dressed very well as Christians. I see that is to show that God is with us. It's not so. It's not so. There are some of you that are dressed so holy. The Baba is so far away from you. Because he doesn't look on the outward appearance. What scares God away from a man is his heart. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? What makes God to keep distance from a man is not first of all how he dresses. And I hope you know that I do not I do not enjoy that you decided to be so flamboyant in your dressing and you are all very worldly and you are wearing costly apparel when there was no need. I hope you know that. But yet I'm telling you, simplicity of dress, holiness of dress, at the expense of holiness of heart, does not attract God to a man. So don't ever imagine that what these brothers are talking about is that we should be going to, we should be doing like this, we should not love, promote, we should not be moving like this. Say, brother, is that is oh, the Lord is here. The Lord is here. No, we are not, I'm not talking of that. I'm not talking of that kind of arrangement. That's an arrangement. I'm not talking of that. I'm talking of an abiding presence. An abiding presence because your heart is conducive for God to dwell. 
your inner man is conducive for the Lord to operate through. And if you're going to do anything, I don't want you to undermine this matter. Once God came to be with Gideon, even the angel looked at him and said, you are a mighty man of valor. When Gideon was this saying, hey, what do you mean? He said, go in this your mind. You know, when they said, go in this your mind, I was expecting that God had prepared one machine gun, one of these sophisticated equipment, this wonderful armory that God placed and said, now, you see, I, the Lord, have come and have provided all these machine guns, go and shoot them. Hmm. Do you know when he went and got up at the 2000? God said, ah, I'm telling you that these 32,000, what are we going to do with them? You don't need them. Gideon was first surprise. You don't need them. Do you know the people we are going to meet? They are numberless. You cannot count them. And I managed to gather 32,000 to go and face numberless hosts with numberless chariots. We number less weapons of war. And you say 32,000 is enough. Ah. You are making a mistake. Oh. God said. And then God said, let me show you. Go and announce. Anybody who is afraid. Anybody who is timid. Anybody who is thinking of his wife. Anybody who has just built a house and he has not slept inside it and is wondering if I should leave my house now. And as you die in the battle, what will happen to me? Anybody who has planted a farm and he has not yet harvested it and is worried, let him go home. To, to the greatest surprise of Mr. Gideon, 22,000. And they were going. And Gideon was saying, what? You mean you, you mean you also, you are going? You mean also you are going? They, want, they say, I'm going, you see. You see, actually I'm just following you because I don't want to discourage you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we, I don't want to discourage you. That's why we came out. I have several abandoned projects at home. Even though the media nights are torturing us, at least I don't want to die. So please, I'm going. And they left. 10,000 were left. That shook Gideon. See God. 10,000 to face numberless things. God said, even these 10,000, there are too many. What? When God tried them out, only 300 came out. And God said, with this 300, it's alright. How can 300 fight a battle for God? It is because, and I want to begin to say some important things to you tonight. God's battle has never been fought because of majority. I don't know how we begin to believe that God needed plenty number in order for his work to be done. And it's never so. Actually, when you have thousands of people, who does not carry God's presence as a personal experience in their lives? They are a problem to the church. A problem. It's a pity that we have many, many people in our churches nowadays, but very few of them could attract God's presence to their lives. That's why things don't happen. That's why issues are difficult. That's why we are going around it in circles. And if you are concerned tonight, I don't want you to do any other thing else, that we should seek God's face and say, Lord, your presence I must get. When you leave this meeting, I'm giving you a project. I'm not sure this meeting can help you to finish praying that prayer. But as you are growing into that presence of God in your life, 
we will see good results coming out of your life in Jesus' name. And I said, what did God give Gideon? He gave him 300 men. But if it is 300 men with sophisticated weapons, we say, ah, it's all right. Because one man will just sit on a, on a kind of, uh, on a kind of, uh, uh, eh? And then he, he alone will just press a button. The thing will just go, 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 like that. Computerized guns. But no, you know what God gave him? Give them a pot. A pot. You know, I up to today. I kept asking, how can you be going to fight a war? You carry a pot. You carry a lantern. And you carry a trumpet. What's the meaning of that? And which of those three weapons can kill a goat? <laughs> let's, let's imagine that. You see a rat or a rabbit coming and you don't have a stone in your hand and the only thing you are carrying is a breakable pot. This clay pot. And you saw that it is a oh, this rabbit, this rabbit. And then you, will, will the rabbit die? What will happen? Your pot will break, the rabbit will escape. And the rabbit will stand at far and be looking at you and be laughing and say, oh foolish man that you are. But you see, when God's presence was with him, even pot, lantern, and a trumpet, they were blowing, they were singing, and as they were singing, the Bible reported, the Lord caused, as they were blowing the trumpet, God caused a kind of tremor to fall upon the camp of the media. And they stood up one by one and started shooting themselves out of fear. Can you imagine a kind of terror that will come? And you say, uh -huh. so you are going to kill me. Before you kill me, I will kill you first. Before you kill me, I will kill you first. And you see, these boys, these 300 boys, were only blowing. They did not do anything with the stood. And were blowing. And things were happening. What brings a breakthrough is God's presence. It's not activity. I wish I could get you to understand this issue and to pray with me and say, God, those things I'm running after is not my need. They are not your need. They are not your need. Your need is God. Brother, you need God in your life. And you see, Joseph found grace in the sight of that man. And so he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you see, something that I kept seeing all through the scripture when I talk about Joseph was the fact that he has only one testimony. That the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he let all that he had in Joseph's heart. He knew not what he had except the bread which he ate. And Joseph was a goodly person, well favored. Hallelujah. And you know the devil? The devil knew what to collect from a man. Amen. What did I say to you? If the devil is looking for something, it's wonderful that when your TV is telling you, ah, the devil attacked me. I want to tell you, when the devil comes to a man, it is not the television he is looking for. Mm -hmm. The devil is not looking for your clothes. 
The devil is not looking for your money. All of those things, they look so precious, but they are not too important to the devil. But any time the devil attacks your physical properties, he has only done it if it will open a gate for him to get what he is looking for. When the devil robs a man and they go to hell to rejoice and say, we got it. The only thing that they rejoice for whenever the devil attacks a man and he got victory is that they rob him of the presence of God in his life. Am I saying something? Are you following me? If the devil has not yet succeeded in robbing the presence of God from you, in robbing you of an intimacy with God, even if you go to hell and you are saying, devil, Kai, the way you have been attacking me, you have carried my clothes, you have carried all my businesses, the devil will say, what have I done to you? Get away! We have not got you yet. The devil is never satisfied with goods. Please get it. So many of us, so many men, we don't know what the devil is looking for. We don't know what he was looking for and he's still looking for today is to rob you of God's presence. If the devil can do something and you will lose the presence of God instantaneously in your life, then if you have ears to hear what they are doing here, they are jubilating at the, on top of their voices. They say, yes, we got it. Yes, we got it. Yes, we got it. And so when the devil gets your car, he gets uh, your clothes, he stole your electronics, he didn't get what he's looking for. All that is but a very simple thing. He's using them if he can touch your life and draw you away from the presence of God. If he can whisper to you and say, ah, your room you don't finish, and you leave God, that's when he's happy. And if you know what the devil is looking for, you regard it jealously. Hallelujah. There's nothing that the devil will take from me that matter to me. Except if he will take that sweet presence. When the devil takes that, I know I'm naked. Are you getting me? When God's presence leaves a man, he's naked. No matter how many clothes, is wrong. When God's presence has deserted a man, no matter how many, many security has put around his house, he is a man without security. He's bare chested. And so you see the strategy of the devil. He quickly sponsored the woman. Why the woman say, lie with me, lie with me. Do you know what the devil was looking for? Say, so let's lure Moses, I mean Joseph, onto something that will rob him of divine presence. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. Do you know that if Joseph lie with that woman, that will be the end of God's presence in his life. But you have more clothes. You know that? He will have more clothes. He will eat more turkey. You know that, madam, you now give him liberty to eat anything, to go in and out. He will now be riding a gas car. But he will have been a foolish man. Is that all right? But once Joseph said, no, sir, I came here naked. But with something. 
you can take my clothes. It is my clothes you will catch. You will not catch that person. Hallelujah. So what you are looking for, you will not get it. And the young man just removed body. While the woman was struggling, 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 struggling with his clothes. He was only using the clothes to grab his life. Brother, the devil only will use material to grab the real thing. Don't allow him in the name of Jesus. You see, Joseph removed his clothes and said, I came here naked. I can still go out naked. Nakedness is not my problem once I have God's presence with me. He left. And he was landed in prison. But look at the Bible again. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison. A place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. What again did you notice? Verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph. And showed him mercy. And gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph and all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the door of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand. Why? Because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Hallelujah. That's it. It was that thing that pushed Joseph. By the time you go to chapter 40, by the time you go to chapter 40, it was that presence of God that opened all the wisdoms of this world unto Joseph. By chapter 41, the presence of God brought Joseph unto the palace of Pharaoh. Hallelujah. That presence of God placed Joseph over and above all. Look at verse 39 of chapter 41. Please follow me quickly. Hallelujah. All I'm doing with you is a survey. What made men great for God? What gave them the victory? And what is giving us an assurance that what he did to them, he can do to us? If he went with them and he said, I can go with you, that's alright. Have you seen verse 39? Maybe even verse 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a man as this is? A man whom in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said to Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took half his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him. Before who? Before Joseph. Bow the knee. Bow the knee. Bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. What brought Joseph to this? He went to school, he joined politics. I don't know when you will learn wisdom. I 
don't know when you will put priority where priority should be placed. I don't know when you will join hands together with us for your own life and say, God, what am I seeking again? What am I seeking again? What is the concern of my life? Somehow the devil tells you that if you should become addicted to this thing of God, you will be a dropout. It's not true. Hallelujah. That is not true. It's a lie. Actually, the only way up is this way. Is this only way? When you look at just uh, at Moses, Moses so understood this matter. Go quickly with me, and let's check Moses. Hallelujah! I'm doing a survey. And they saw you are men that were great. And I saw what made them great. I didn't see what we are emphasizing as what makes men great. I see something, it looks quiet, it looks secret. But that is the issue. And if the Lord will place that in your hand, then I know if you now say, Go in this your might, I can boldly say to you. I know every man with whom God dwells is a mighty man. Hallelujah. Chapter 32. Exodus 32 and 33. You know the story in chapter 32. How Moses went up to the mount to be with God. And then the people committed sin and the Lord said go down, go down, go down go down go down and all that happened in chapter 32 verse 34 32, 34 before we go to chapter 3 therefore now go Lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I will visit, I will visit their sin upon them. Chapter 33 And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, you and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, Unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying unto your seed will I give it. And I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Evites, the, the, the Perizzites, uh, all the Parasites, unto a land, are you understanding? Flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in the midst of day. For thou art a stiff naked people, lest I consume thee in the way. Are you following? So go quickly to verse 12. If you read, before you read verse 12, what we have read now, does it not look like a promise from God? It is. Are there not miraculous signs in that in that promise? What did he say? I will send an angel before you. I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Evite, the Jebusite. For I will not go up in the midst of day. So what are you seeing? There's a conflict there. That it is possible for the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, to be falling before a man. And God's presence has left him. Eh? It 
is possible for a man, a minister, to still be bulldozing devils, all the Jebusites, all the Perizzites, all the Amorites, is still waving his hand and they are all on the ground. And Baba's presence has left him. You see, there is something peculiar about God's presence that we cannot just even explain because miracles are taking place. There is something peculiar about God's presence on the life of a man that will not allow us to just assume that because our meetings are going on, our programs are progressing, everything is here and there, that God must be there. And Moses, very sensitive, he has known that presence for some years now. He knows the benefit of that presence. He knows the wisdom of that presence. Look at what he said. Look at what he said. Moses said to the Lord, See, thou sayest to me, bring up these people. And thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name. And thou hast also found grace in my sight. As well not told thee whom he will send. What did he say? I sent an angel, but as far as Moses was concerned, angel is nobody compared with the presence of God. A man that used to talk with God face to face, who used to relate to God directly, if he now begin to see ordinary angel, you know that's a downgrading. That's a demotion. Whereas some people that have never met God, they have not worked with God closely. If you mention angel to them, they say, Oh, glory, glory, glory. Angel Gabriel saw me yesterday. Ah, in the mic, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. You see, it's because they have not seen what we are talking about. What's an angel? Compare with God's presence. What I'm praying with you tonight, I'm not asking you for a vision. Some of you are so excited. I fell into a trance. And I saw a snake trance. I saw one angel. The wind came like this. The other one came like this. And he just stood there. He said, oh, the <laughs> Don't be afraid. What is that? <laughs> I know you are excited about it because you yet don't know the sweetness of working with Baba on a day to day basis. When you have understood what it means to dwell under the wings of the Almighty God, you will never prefer the wings of an angel. If God has started revealing himself to you in his word, you will never, never be excited that somebody say, I saw a vision for you. No! What's the meaning of that? If God will draw you to this thing that I'm talking about, there is nothing in this wide world, there is no man of God so called that will be so precious to you as to replace that sweet presence in your life because he said anytime you have a problem come I will pray for you <clears throat> no I feel very bad if I cannot hear Baba directly and we converse and as I'm going I say Baba you know this way I say yes we are together I'm with you I feel bad that I don't hear God only to come for a meeting and I sit down and then uh, one sister just stand down and say, Oh, yala ma 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 ya ra ba 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 that only when I come for a meeting, somebody say, ba 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 ya ra ba ba ya ra ba ba ya ra ba ba ya ra ba ba. Well, it may be good, 
may be good, but it's not good enough. It's not good enough. Do you know what I like? I like that as I come in, me and Baba were discussed. And as a matter of confirmation, that is an astute that said, Hori Laba Sandara Baba Yanto Robo Surya, I, your father, am here. As I've spoken to you before, I'm speaking again. I say, Yes, thank you, sir. I say, Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I like it that somebody came and said, Bragule, I saw a vision. The Lord told me this as a cool down. You told me before. That's what I want. That's how it should be. That's how it should be. I want to work with him. I want to become intimate with him. I want to grow with him. I don't want to be hearing him from outside. I want outsiders only to come after you have spoken. I want them only to be a confirmation. Because it's an intimacy. How do you feel? Eh? As a woman, how many sisters here you are married? You and your husband, you slept and woke up together in the same house. You slept on the same bed. And he didn't tell you the program of his heart that you're going to Zaria. Only when you came out, another sister said, Ah, praise God. Ponku said he's going to Zaria. How do you feel? Huh? Eh? That sister that come and say, praise God, uncle say he's going to Zaria. How would you like to feel to that girl as a wife? What do you feel? Ah! You feel like chopping her and say, you? You mean that you are hearing first before I hear? You know it pains. It, does it not pain you? Ah, uh-uh, it pains me. He Baba will leave me. He will talk to me yet. Everything is closed. And then someone, somewhere, is making an announcement. And it's a new announcement. Mm-mm. It's not good. There's something better than that. And God is going to give to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this man of God said, look, he said, you have not told me who, who, who is going with me. And you are saying, look at what you said, and you said, I know you by name. And you have found grace in my sight. What do you mean? You have found grace in your sight. You know me by my name. And you are not going with me. No, you are not telling me anything. Look at the way that man spoke. And I love him. Because he's a man that I saw that you understood something. And I wish I would have such an understanding too. You know what he said? Now therefore I pray you. If I have found grace in your sight. Show me now your way. That I may know thee. That I may find grace in your sight. And consider that this nation is your people. And he said my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. And he said to him. Excuse me. If your presence go not with me. Do what? I'm not going away. I don't want Jebusites to be me left and right when you are not there. Miracles are meaningless when God's presence has left a man. Are you getting me? Look, even if your business should expand, and that is happening at the expense of God's presence, rather than rejoice, what do I want you to do? I want you to cry. I want you to weep. If you are getting more money, and yet the, the, your sensitivity to God is reducing with no money, you need to cry. It's like you want something want to kill you. Moses says, excuse me, if your presence not go with me, carry us not from here. I'm not good. I'm not good. And you see his argument in verse 16 says, For where shall it be known here? That I and your people have found grace in your sight. Is it not in that thou goest with us? Are you hearing his own argument? 
that shall we be different? As far as he was concerned, pushing down Jebusites does not make any man different. Are you understanding that now? He has come to realize that all those miraculous, they are good, but anybody can do it. The difference between men is not what they do, it's who, 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 who they are working with. Because Moses knew that if all he went to Egypt to demonstrate is to throw down the rod and he became a snake. If that was all he went there with, what would have happened to him? Eh? You would have been disgraced because when he dropped it and the thing became a snake, ah, all the Egyptians they look at him and say, what do you mean? Is that you are terrifying us with snake? Eh? We are, we are, we, we, we culture snake. And all the ten of them, what did they do? They dropped their, they dropped their rod. Snakes came everywhere. If there was no God beside Moses that told him, well, pick your snake now. And it became a rod back in his hand. You know that there's no, there's nothing about it. He came and said something else. They counteracted it. He said another one. They counteracted it. The devils can counteract miracles. It's not the big issue by which we know who he is a man with whom God dwells. So this man says, excuse me sir, if you are not going with me, I'm not going anywhere. For wherein shall it be known here that I and these people are found great in your sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are found the face of the earth. Hallelujah! What distinguishes a man? Presence of God. I don't know how to describe it, but that's how it happened. And why am I talking about it? Is because that is the secret of their might. That's the secret of their greatness. That is what gave them breakthroughs. If we tell you, go, 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 you will be a great man. Everything will fall before you and we don't tell you what made them great. We are deceiving you. If you leave this meeting and you don't know what to pursue, personally as a person, then we have deceived you. It's God's presence. It is the thing that makes a difference. And if a man is growing in the presence of God, the truth I'm telling you is that if you don't know him today, wait, you will hear of him tomorrow. Hallelujah. And because Moses insisted, the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, I beseech you, show me your glory. Can you see that? He never goes and he says, show me your glory. That's what I'm saying. Hallelujah. By the time Moses got into that presence, when he came down, what did the Bible say about him? By the skin of his face was shining. Somehow, somehow, that presence conquered the lands for him. If you go and read, even the commission of Joshua, all that God says that I will be with you. Is that not so? There's nothing else God gave him. God didn't give him any other thing. I will be with you. If you go and read the story of David, that was all that God did for him. I will be with you. Amen. If you read the story of, 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 of David, go and check the story of Asa, all those kings that did great wonders for God, the conclusion is that the Lord was with him. I remember when Balaam was caught by Balak. You remember Balak? He invited Balaam and said, Look, these people are too strong. 
How can we conquer them? Balaam said, We gave him a small secret that Balak used to destroy the children of Israel. Do you know it? He told, he told Balaam, he told Balak, then look, oh, these people, you see them. Machine gun cannot kill them. There's nothing you do, you can't conquer them. Because there's no enchantment against Jacob. There's no divination against Israel. You know why? He said, for the Lord is with him. The shout of a king is among them. And as the Lord has not seen iniquity in Jacob, and has not seen perverseness in Israel, you cannot conquer them. In fact, they will, they will expand. Balak said, do you understand what I'm telling you? I said, you should curse them. Why are you blessing them? Well, those that God has blessed, nobody can curse. When a man, when God is with a man, you don't need to fight him. Are you hearing me? You don't need to curse a man with whom God is dwelling with. You are wasting your time. The more you curse him, the more progress he will make. He will keep moving forward with God. You know, I stop worrying myself about people making enchantations and, uh, and uh, charms. Doesn't worry. Even if you call my name and you say that I believe, this, this thing, we have got it. And they say you will call your name on it. Now, now, you will die. Do you know I will not pray? I will not. I will not. I'm telling you the truth. I will, I will invite you and say, do you want to rub it around my head? If that is, if it is will break down before him. Nations will bow before him. Storms of life will fall and break before him. Lord, do this thing for us. Lord, do this thing for us. We are not asking for money. We are not asking for gold. We are not asking for silver. We are asking for you. We have asked for gifts long enough. We need to give her tonight. We need to give her tonight. Spirit of the Lord, we need to give her tonight. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, give an understanding to your people. Give an understanding to your people. Give an understanding, O Lord, to your people. That they are going forth. There may be a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. Draw me near. Near blessed Lord to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near, near blessed Lord to the precious bleeding side. Draw me near, draw me near. Oh, near, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near, draw me near. Praise the Lord to thy precious 
One more time, draw me nearer. We are still praying, we are still talking to God. We are still talking to God. We are telling Him, Lord, don't carry me from here. If you are not going to go definitely with my life. It's your presence that, that brings prosperity in life. Precious blood, Lord inside. We're still praying. We're still praying. We're still praying. God wants to go with you. God wants to walk with you. You can be great, I tell you. You can be great. What made them great? With God's presence in their lives. It is God that went with them, that turned their lives around, that gave power to their messages, that made them victorious. It was the Lord that went with them. If you read the book of Acts, and the Lord went with them, confirming their word with signs and wonders following, the Lord went with them. If the Lord doesn't go with us, where are we going? Do you desire His presence tonight? More than silver and gold? More than clothes? More than vehicles? Do you desire Him to go with you? More than everything? Get that presence, all other things must come. Your life will be straightened out. Your experience will become a different one. Lord, Lord, answer our cry tonight. Answer the cry of your servants tonight. Carry us not from here and say your presence goes with us. In a definite sense, in a particular sense, in a definite manner, cause your presence to go with us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Ah, thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. I've told you, brothers, sisters, I've told you, we can pray all the prayer here. This place is not enough. It's just for God to show you a thing and then you go back. God is going to manifest Himself, manifest His glory to those that are seeking Him. God is going to work with us. Since He said He has delighted in our lives, what made men great was His presence. What will have made a stone to kill a big Goliath if not the presence of God with David? Who could have done that? What will make Paul to turn the whole of Asia upside down in two years if not that God was with him and the way he was with them that's what we are asking for in this meeting and if you desire tonight we are going to be praying together I will send you back into his presence I know he will not keep quiet as your heart starts up it will take time, it, whatever it will take. It will take some diligent seeking, but God will help us. The Holy Spirit that wanted us to know this secret, that instead of chalking it out with all activities, He is going to help us. But however, my brother, my brother, He 
after any leakage in your life that causes God's presence to keep lifting away from your life? Is there any anxiety, any ambition that once it comes, you don't mind if you lose God until you get it and it's robbing you of this thing? Is there a Delilah that is coming to your life, my brother? That girl looks as if she's the one you want to marry, but every time she comes, she robs you of God's presence. You are left bimbuku, you are left empty. Nothing again, only to start groping back in darkness. Don't keep quiet. Balam told Balak. If only you can sponsor sin into their lives. Baba himself will run from them. Is there anything that scares God's presence from your life tonight? Is your business? Is it a friendship? Is it a partnership? What is it that is making God's presence to elude you? I know you are struggling. I know you are running around, you are making effort, but the key unto open doors is what you have left tonight. Don't let us leave this meeting without us settling it. Let's block every loophole, every sinful habit, every carelessness, every entanglement, every problem so called that you have not dealt with before. Ah, my brother, deal with it tonight. The devil is not looking for your clothes. He's not looking for your car. He's looking for your soul. He's looking for how to separate you from the presence of God. He knows as long as you are with God, a man with God is more than a majority. He knows that. If God be for us, who can be against us? He knows that. But he also knows the secret weapon that separates a man from the Lord. The weapon of sin. Friend, if you are here tonight, it's time for me to conclude this meeting in prayer. We have been praying. But you know there's a leakage. There's a sinful habit you have not confessed. You have accepted it so you say, well, I cannot be like those brothers who are preaching. I don't have the anointing to be great. I will just be a follow follow believer because something is robbing God's presence from your life. David came from behind. He was the least in his father's house. But God's presence made him great. Gideon was the least in his father's house. The presence of God made him great. Moses was a stammerer. The presence of God made him great. I want to ask you, we want to pray again. And I don't want us to go out of this meeting presumptuously. Is there anything that you know and you know it? It has slaughtered your life. It has slaughtered the grace of God. It has slaughtered God's presence. It has rendered you empty. Don't leave this meeting. Let's settle it with God. There's no space for me to say, oh, yeah, come out. But I can ask you again to point yourself to the Lord by lifting up your right hand and say, God, let's block this matter tonight. That thing that has been my trouble in life, I've been hearing great messages, but I feel empty. I feel dried, I feel leaked. As if I've leaked away. Only ghosts block these holes in my life tonight. God bless you. You are outside and you know it. It's a pity that I cannot bring you in. There's no space. But you can lift up your right hand to heaven and say, God, block this loophole for my life. I want this stopped tonight. I want that issue to stop tonight. I want that relationship to stop tonight. 
I want that matter to stop tonight. I want this habit to end tonight. God bless you. God bless you. Don't joke with it. What made men great is because God was with them. Ah, the Lord has not been heard iniquity in Jacob. He has not seen any perverseness in Israel. So the shout of the king is among them. Does God see a perverseness in your business, in your family, in your relationship with your wife, in your private life? Lift up that right hand and confess it to the Lord. And say, God, let's block it tonight. Let's block it tonight. Joseph left his clothes in order to preserve God's presence in his life. Whatever you can give up tonight. Whatever you can let go tonight. To preserve the presence of God that will cover your nakedness. Do it as we pray together. Do it, my brother. Do it, my sister. Lift up thy right hand to heaven with all your heart. And tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. This thing will not separate me and you. No woman will separate between me and you. No business will separate between me and you. No habit will separate between me and you. Marriage will not separate between me and you. Contract will not separate between me and you. Worldly pleasure will not separate between me and you. Clothes will not stand between me and the Savior. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. Not of this world's elusive dream. I have renounced all sinful pleasure. Holy Spirit, look at these hands tonight. Look at these lives tonight. Make it a definite experience. Make it a definite experience. Lord, don't... In the name of Jesus, with your right hand to God, make it a definite, a definite decision. Before the plague will stop, Phineas carried a dead away and choked the stomach of that day. You need not to pamper yourself tonight. Anything that robs you of God's presence has robbed you of every progress. Anything. Anything that takes God's presence from a man's life has made him empty. When that thing came into the life of Adam, he became a useless man. The Lord is here tonight. You can imagine that God has been saying many things, yet He brought us back to fundamentals. If God cannot go with you, where are you going? Something that I will rise, I will go as I used to go, not knowing that the Lord has departed from Him. It is too presumptuous for a man to go when there is a matter between him and the Savior. With your hand lifted to God. Just whisper to him. And we will take the same song we sang before. I will call that song and as you are singing it with me, I want God to help you and to help us together. Oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Me to the end, be thou forever near me. My master, my friend. I shall not fear the battle. If thou art 
God by my side. May wander from the pathway. If that would be my guide. Let me feel you near me. The world is ever near. I see the sight that dazzles. The sight that dazzles. The tempting sounds are here. My foes are ever near me, around me and within. Around me and within. But Jesus, throw down nearer. And shield my soul from sin. My soul from sin. Lift up that hand as you have done before. The Lord understands what is talking to us about tonight. And pray that He will block that loophole. Father, tonight. Only you who can do this work. Even if we are to sit down here tonight and cancel men, we will not live here. But I know you have power to block this matter. We have cried to you tonight. That issue that robbed your presence from us. Uproot it tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Those powers that seem to overpower us, those habits that stood between us, those women, those men, those ideas, those attractions that the enemy had used to lure us away from the source of our strength tonight, Father, cut them off in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Those things that render your people important, that leak away your glory in their lives, they yell and yell and yell and yell, they have lost their voice, nothing has happened. They prayed and cried, but little result had been seen. Because Baba is not there. Tonight, Father, uproot these matters in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's only one cry in our heart. No those that are standing up and confessing these matters. And those of us that are standing or kneeling down and saying, God, your presence. If it will not go with us, don't take us from here. To proceed without your presence is disaster. To venture into anything without the abiding anointing on our lives is to make a ridicule of our lives and to, and to crack a joke where the devil will slap us. Tonight, Father, do this thing as you did it for men of old. Yeah. You did it for Joseph. You did it for Enoch. You did it for Moses. You did it for Joshua. Joshua. Because the Lord was with him. He dealt with Jericho like one man. Lord, and when the Lord departed from them, a common a high. Very small town of Ahab. It became an impossible place. It is not gone. It is not multitude. It is not the host. It is not plenty people. 
that wins a battle for God. It is His presence. And I pray tonight, Lord, let not your presence depart from us. Amen. Let not your presence leave us, O God. Amen. We are breaking this meeting to continue in your presence. Lord, several of us are stirred and we feel this matter has to be dealt with. Holy Spirit, whichever way you will introduce your presence to us again, do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Those that are complacent, those that did not know that this is the answer, is the key to everywhere they are supposed to be, that they are discovering tonight, draw them to your presence. Amen. Lord, it was root that made a prayer to the hearts. They spread your garment on me and cover me. Lord, but we are not talking to Ebohaz tonight. We are talking to Jesus, our next of King. And we are saying, Lord, spread your wings and cover us. Spread your wings and swallow us into your presence. As you get Moses, he climbed on the mount and he was there. The Bible said the presence of God descended and he was caught up into it. Lord, catch us up in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Catch us up into that glorious presence. That from tonight, Lord, it will become our experience. Yeah. Men experienced it. They knew when it left them. They knew it. They felt it everywhere they went. It rested permanently on their souls. The Bible says one day Jesus was teaching many doctors of the law, scribes and Pharisees were there. But the presence, the power of God was also present for him to heal them. Lord, that's what we are asking. Even several of us as preachers, we have preached. We have done deep, 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 deep Bible studies. But we didn't see evidence. What was missing? That divine presence that presses a matter into people's spirit in an irresistible manner. Lord, grant it to us in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we go, to come back here tomorrow to continue to press on this issue. Holy Ghost, don't leave us alone. As your people sleep, open the word of God to them. Peculiarly visit us. Come and set on our spirit. Come and set on our spirit. As you descended in those days and sat on Jesus and you remained on him and he went everywhere under that power. Let it happen in the name of Jesus. Housewives that look as if they are hopeless. They are not hopeless. They can become great. The Buddha was a mere housewife. When you came on her life and things turned around, God turned things around us tonight. Yeah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Launch us into this experience. Don't let this meeting break until this matter has been settled in our lives. As we go and go on and go on until Sunday when we are going to be facing a charge, we are praying. Bring us to a position where we will know that when we speak, it is your presence with us that will give credence and authority to the words of our mouth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Let your presence break all yokes around us. Amen. All those incessant attacks. Yes, the devil came. Before he came, he first of all palpated whether Baba is anywhere around. When he noticed that he was not, he took over and said, yes, I can sit here. 
Tonight we are rebuking in the name of Jesus. We force you out of that place in the name of Jesus. Those that you are tormenting night after night, night after night, we bring upon you the name of the Lord. We command you to break off in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. For you will follow this man home. They will turn their environment. We will come back with testimonies. Father, those that are having difficulties in life, difficulty with their health, we release them in the name of Jesus Christ. You cast out devils in those days by your finger. Yes, and by the Spirit of God. Do it again tonight. Do it again tonight. Do it again tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those that are stagnated in life. I said the devil will want to just penetrate and rob them of something serious. Father, that maneuver of Satan will put it in the name of Jesus. We know, O oh Lord, that when you come, good things come. And that's our consolation tonight. That the sign of good tidings has come to us. Thank you, Father. So, Lord, watch over us. Watch over our steps. Take us to our destinations. Go ahead of us and come behind us. Cause your presence to go with us and make your face to shine upon us. Perfect all that concerns us from this day ends first in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.